Urban renewal or urban revitalization was a program of land redevelopment in cities throughout the United States where there was deemed to be urban decay. Urban renewal began in the late 19th century and was revitalized and saw an uptake in the 1940s under the rubric of reconstruction. Although this process was meant to be a positive, it had a major impact on many urban landscapes and has played an important role in the history and demographic of cities around the country. There are links between urban revitalization of central business districts and cities and the gentrification of residential neighborhoods. Gentrification is seen as a process of renovation of deteriorated urban neighborhoods by means of the influx of more affluent residents. However, over time, urban renewal evolved into policy based less of destruction of neighborhoods and more on reinvestment and renovation. renovation. Today, urban renewal is an integral part of many local governments with incentives posed for both big and small business. Uh, in 1949, the Housing Act of 1949 was passed and many civic leaders wanted to take advantage of this new legislation. The American Housing Act of 1949 was a landmark sweeping expansion of the federal role in mortgage insurance and the issuance and construction of public housing. It was part of President Harry Truman's Fair Deal. The main elements of this act included federal financing for slum clearance programs associated with urban renewal projects in the American cities, increased authorization for the Federal Housing Administration mortgage issuance, and the extension of federal money to build more than 800,000 public housing units. Pictured in the blue is the District of the South Auditorium. In the early 1950s, Portland suffered from urban decay. The need for urban renewal was vital to attracting business to the South Auditorium District. In order to attract business and thus garner increased revenue and money coming into the city, Portland needed to clear vice areas and areas of blight. Urban blight is a process by which a previously functioning city or area of the city falls into disrepair and decrepitude. The image shown is of the South Auditorium District. In 1955, the Mayor of Portland Advisory Committee identified the blocks at the southeast end of downtown Portland suitable for a land clearance and redevelopment project. This next image is a financial summary of the urban renewal project. It shows the total project expenditure costs as well as the city contributions, the gross project costs, as well as the money that will be made from the land sales. This document and financial summary is very important to knowing how much the city planned to, to spend on the project as well as the total amount of money it would cost both the state and federal government for this urban renewal project. In February of 1956, the City Council of Portland submitted to the Housing and Home Financing Agency a survey and planning application for the South Auditorium project. In May 1956, the Federal Housing and Home Finance Agency approved the $84,193 survey and planning grant and reserved $3,167,000 for the project. Finally, on August 11, 1956, the committee recommended clearance of six flooded areas of the city. The big square of southeast Portland between Union and 12th, 12th Avenues and Hawthorne and Division Streets, the east side Willamette Riverfront between Broadway and Steel Bridges and the South Auditorium District. The years 1956 through 1957, the assessor's records indicate that all property taxes from the area provided only $143,268 that went to the city, county, and school districts. New development will realize approximately 558000 for these differing tax bodies. In the early years of 1957, the urban renewal staff was assembled and existing conditions were studied prior to the drafting of the plans for the project. Fast forward to May 7, 1957, the Comprehensive Development Plan was approved by the Planning Commission for the southwestern portion of the city. Thus, on September 26, 1957, after many meetings, the Commission reviewed and approved the redevelopment plan in principle. January 15, 1958, 
After three years of research, litigation, and documentation, the redevelopment plan and supporting documents are first published. This was merely a rough draft. In February 1958, the committee adopted a revised zoning ordinance and zoning map. In May 1958, a half a million dollar levy was placed for the urban renewal project. The levy was a five year and used exclusively for urban renewal purposes. The levy estimated would produce $500,000 annually. After the numbers were shown and configured, the city council received, reviewed, and approved the project. Five months after it was approved by the city council of Portland, the HFFA approved the plan, which meant that it would get the necessary funded funding and needed from the federal government. As with all government processes and commitments, there was a significant delay as there needed to be changes addressed in the documentation. On October 1961, the amended plan, which moved the location of the proposed freeway, which allowed the project to be more closely integrated with the Central Business District rather than separated as proposed in the 1958 plan. In 1960, the Veterans Memorial Coliseum opened at the east end of the Broadway Bridge. This was an amazing accomplishment and was another way for the city to bring in added tax revenues. In 1963, the city of Portland extended the project boundaries north to include 26 acres between Market and Jefferson Street. The commission then sold this expansion to make more money and give back to the community. This expansion was created in part to rid the city of Portland's worst vice district. The vice district was full of drug dealers, prostitution, and homeless people. By getting rid of the vice and illegal activities, co-urban renewal, urban renewal advocates saw this as a way to make Portland safer. Urban renewal not only helped businesses and the economy, but it also made the streets safer for the community. Finally, in 1963, all the land in the plan was raised in the districts to allow for the new development. The Portland District Committee used the TIF for urban renewal. The 14-year tax bonds were sold and fully retired in 1974 due to the substantial increase in assessed value for the area due to the redevelopment. All in all, the project added over $394 million to the tax rolls in the city of Portland. Urban redevelopment might not have worked everywhere, but it spurred the local economy of Portland. This project not only reinvigorated a deteriorating neighborhood, but it also brought back the livelihood and well-being of the people who live and work in or around the neighborhood. This image shows South Auditorium District today and its retail sector, the areas for more improvement, as well as the different attractions. Today, the City of Portland and the South Auditorium District are thriving. The district is known as a hotspot for local art and sculptures created by different artists from around the country as well as throughout the region. The district is an award winning development with its high rise buildings, generous setbacks, and landscaping numerous plazas and fountains, and elaborate pedestrian walkway system. As the years have gone on, the City of Portland has continued to add value and different attributes to the district, making it a tourist destination as well as a Portland hotspot. One of the coolest parts of the South Auditorium District is where nationally recognized landscape architect Lawrence Halpern designed many different outdoor spaces. Finally, this image is of the Keller Fountain Park in the South Auditorium District. This was created by world-renowned architect Lawrence Halpern in 1970 and is noted as a memorable feature of the public landscape in downtown Portland. Not only did Portland use urban renewal to create mixed-use area of residential living and commercial business, but the city also incorporated different landscape architecture. By using landscape architecture, the city created not only a mixed-use area, but also an area of tourism and intrigue. In doing so, Portland added another stream of rev revenue through tourism and art galleries and art fairs.